point. Um, I'm not sure you see my screen. Uh, can you? I'm missing myself here. I guess it should. It's a bit short. Uh, okay. So I'm assuming you see my screen. Uh, I don't have any feedback here. So, um, yeah, I'm going to talk about uh, Scala CLI. And um, before I start, uh, just one thing to know about Scala CLI is uh, there are two ways to pronounce it. Uh, so I'm going to pronounce it uh, Scala CLI as it's an English uh, acronym, acronym uh, for command line interface. Uh, but some people, I mean, you might hear it pronounced uh, Scala key with the French E. Key. And um, that actually originates from some French picker being involved in the early uh, discussions about Scala CLI. And for some reasons, uh, it sticked around. Some people liked it. And so that's, uh, that's what it is. So um, Scala CLI has two names, Scala CLI or uh, Scala Key. So um, I'm going to. So in this talk, I'm going to to have a closer look at how to manage uh, micro libraries with uh, Scala CLI. And in particular, we'll see how to publish a Scala CLI project to a remote uh, repository. Uh, so and before I, I show you this in more details, I'm going to summarize what Scala CLI is, uh, where it comes from, and then we we'll have, uh, we'll have the actual demo. So if you if you don't know me, uh, my name is Alex Archambault or Alexandre Archambault. Uh, I have uh, I'm on GitHub and Twitter in particular with uh, slight slightly different uh, handles. Um, so I've been doing Scala since 2013, and I've been involved in open source Scala since 2014. And in 2015, I started the project called uh, Coursier, which became the main uh, the main dependency manager of the Scala tooling. So it's used by SVT, by uh, Mir, by Ammonite, um, and now by Scala CLI. Um, and it's also used uh, beyond Scala by uh, Bazel people. It's uh, if you, the default way to manage uh, Java libraries from Bazel is backed by, uh, by Coursier. Uh, apart from that, I'm also the author of Almond, which is a Jupyter kernel for Scala. And uh, more recently, I uh, started Scala CLI from Vietos Lab. Um, and I'm also, also contribute to a few projects such as uh, Ammonite, or um, I have smaller contributions in Metals, and I also contributed in the past to Shapeless. But in this talk, we, we are going to focus on Scala CLI. Um, so why, uh, why did we start such, uh, such a project? Um, I would say it's the, the, the motivation and the idea of Scala CLI was somehow in the, the atmosphere, uh, around the time when we started it. Uh, that is, um, the Scala CLI aims at being the new Scala command. It ends at being the official Scala CLI, which it is not yet. Um, and it wished, it wishes to become the new Scala command because there is an already existing Scala command, which is quite limited. And so people have been, have been wanting to, to make it better. And um, that's one of the motivations of why we started Scala CLI. So you know, the, the default Scala command can be installed from the archive or using CS here, the, the Coursier command line. And with it, you can compile and run Scala files, except it's, uh, it's quite limited. So you can't add dependencies this way. You can't uh, package things. Um, you can't, uh, you can't easily do Scala JS or Scala native. Um, so it's, it's, it's not, it's not powerful enough for, for what people want. 
And in particular, uh, it's a problem with uh, beginners. So when you know, when you when you learn Scala and you, from a book or at university, say, and you want to run a bit of Scala code, uh, it's not that you, you can do it with the Scala command, the current Scala command, but um, but as you can't add dependencies, it's very uh, very limiting. Um, also, another root of uh, Scala CLI is, I guess, new tools that appeared since the beginning of Scala, such as the Coursier, whose command line is CS here, or uh, Ammonite, M. And uh, these tools have a better UX, and some people have been proposing to, to add, uh, to, add to, to make them better so that they could be substituted to the, the current Scala command. Like for Coursier, some people proposed to add a compile subcommand that it could also compile files with the same kind of UX of, uh, the, of the other commands of CS. Um, in Ammonite, uh, so Ammonite allows you to run not exactly Scala files, but SC files here, which are Scala files accepting top level definitions. And um, people have been wanting to make Ammonite better uh, by, in particular, adding packaging support to it, or adding Scala.js and Scala.native support, by adding incremental compilation support, etc. Um, but the thing is, all these uh, all these features would have been, each of them would have been a significant refactoring of Ammonite. So all these refactoring would have been quite a daunting task. So that's why we started Scala CLI uh, from scratch. Um, among the other sources of inspiration for uh, Scala CLI, uh, there is um, th there are sources in other ecosystems such as in Rust or Go, uh, where um, uh, such as Cargo in the Rust ecosystem or the Go CLI in Go, which are quite handy if you program in any of these languages. Um, and lastly, uh, Python. Python command line is also somehow a source of inspiration for, for the Scala CLI because if you have an Python, if you have a bit of Python code and if you want to run it, you can just put it in a, in a file and call Python this file and it's going to run this bit of Python code. That's, of course, that's putting aside any uh, package management aspects of, of Python, but on, in practice, People use Python this way, and this is one thing that makes Python an accessible language. And it would be great if we could have a similar thing in, in Scala. And that's what Scala CLI aims at, uh, aims at doing. So uh, who, who, is, who is behind uh, Scala CLI? Uh, so I would say it's mainly Virtus Lab. Uh, Virtus Lab has been developing Scala CLI. Uh, but uh, Scala CLI began uh, from discussion, discussions between Virtus Lab, the Scala Center, and LAMP, the laboratory uh, where Martin Odaski uh, works as a, as a professor. Um, so they were um, they were discussing things. Um, I mean, Scala CLI ID was being discussed by. Uh, but then, um, early in 2021, and uh, Virtus Lab decided to, to go for it and to try to develop Scala CLI. And I joined them in April 2021, specifically to, to bootstrap a uh, Scala CLI project. So the, um, the timeline basically of the project since then is uh, in April or May, we had first uh, proof of concept of, uh, of Scala CLI, uh, and they were quite promising. So a second developer joined full-time in June to work on the project, and a third one joined in September, all while the project was, st was still uh, not officially public. And um, after having talked about it to, uh, to some people, uh, we decided to make a first official public release uh, of Scala CLI in October. Uh, so we allowed us to, to gather uh, quite some feedback 
and in January 2022, we get a first somehow stable release uh, 010. Stable in the sense that we don't break the way it accepts inputs or the way it's being configured. Um, and we, we are still actually on the, still on the 0 0.1 branch. And uh, in February 2022, uh, we started, we initiated uh, a SIP process, a Scala improvement proposal. Uh, first, on contributors.scalalang.org, uh, where people were able to discuss it. And then it became an official uh, Scala improvement proposal during the summer. And we had the first run of reviews between uh, the, Scala CLI team, sorry, the Scala CLI team and uh, the SIP committee. Um, and uh, I mean, now we can say that Scala CLI is on good track to become the official Scala command with a few, maybe with a few, few changes, uh, probably at the end of the year or early in 2023, if all goes well. So um, I talked quite a bit of Scala CLI, but I didn't show uh, what it is or what it does uh, in practice. So um, I'm not going to demo everything that Scala CLI does because that would take too much time, um, but roughly speaking, we can split Scala CLI features into two groups. We have the, the core features, uh, going to compile code, to run code, to run test, and to package the things. All of this on the JVM, but also uh, on from JavaScript and native and on native platforms using ScalaJS and Scala Native. So these are the, the core features of Scala CLI, but then there are also more uh, fancy features um, such as uh, GraalVM support. So you can package a Scala CLI project using native image just by passing a single option dash dash native dash image, which I won't demo here, but uh, you can find more details about this uh, online. Um, we are also working on adding uh, some Spark features to Scala CLI. So we are adding a tail dash Spark option, allowing to package Spark jobs in the package subcommand. But um, we, we are also experimenting with adding Spark support in other commands, in run, for example, allowing to, to run Spark jobs right from Scala CLI. And also uh, something in the REPL command, allowing to get a Spark REPL uh, from Scala CLI, where you can access uh, things you can define in a Scala CLI project, uh, which would allow you to, to use those uh, from Spark directly. Um, so that's one thing. Another thing is we are working on adding Python features. So um, we, we are trying to make it easier to use uh, locally installed Python libraries from Scala via ScalaPy. Um, so for that, we are adding a Python option to many subcommands of Scala CLI that allow um, in particular to, to use straight away the Py object from ScalaPy uh, in a Scala code um, when you use Scala CLI. Which allows you, which in turn allows you to use uh, any uh, Python library that you have installed locally. And I'm not going to demo this here. Um, I'm going to demo another of these fancy features, which is uh, publishing, allowing to publish a Scala CLI project to a remote Maven repository. And so, what does publish does in more detail and what am I going to, to demo? Uh, I'm going to show you how to publish locally a Scala CLI project with the publish local command of Scala CLI. Then I'm going to publish that project, but to remote repositories, first as a snapshot and then as a non-snapshot that is going to land on Maven Central. 
And lastly, I'm going to do the same, so publishing to snapshots and to Maven Central, but from the CI of the project that I'm going to write. So, um, for the more we, the further we go in the demo, the riskier it's going to be. So, uh, yeah, and hopefully it's all going to work. So, um, demo time. Right, so here I have an empty directory. Right, um, and I'm going to uh, create a new Scala project, Scala CNI project from it, from it as. So, um, so I'm opening this directory in VS Code and so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create um, file. So I'm going to write a minimal tool uh, called ls here, doing what uh, ls does on the command line that is listing uh, files in the directory that we pass to it. So um, one one thing to to note here is um, so in the near future, uh, metals should have uh, should when opening a Scala file like this in Metals, a file not attached to SBT or to MIR, uh, Metals should assume it is a file managed by Scala CLI. Uh, yet it's not the case yet. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to run the Scala CLI command. It is going to write a few files that will make Metals assume this file is a Scala CLI file. So for that, I can run any uh, basic Scala CLI command, such as compile, say. So I'm going to compile files in the current directory in watch mode. If I did this, so it's an empty file, so there are no errors. And uh, what happened here is this command created this .vsp directory here, which will allow metals to find, to we should make metals uh, assume this file is a Scala CLI file. So I'm going to restart metals. And um, we should see some Scala CLI messages here. And in the meantime, I'm going to start writing this tool. So one thing in Scala CLI is um, these directives here using something with this kind of command here. Um, but this is the way, uh, this is a way to configure Scala CLI. So if you want to add the dependency, you can use a uh, using a lib directive here. So you can see some Scala CLI I put here. So metals found Scala CLI. Um, so here I'm going to add the dependency. I'm going to add uh, OS lib. Uh, which allows to easily uh, list file, interact with the, the file system. Um, yes, in the, the near future, we should have a completion for these dependencies strings here. Uh, we don't, we don't yet. So I'm going to write it uh, from, from what I recall. So it should be this and very soon. We, sh we shouldn't have to remember all of these details will have completion here. So if I do this, if I save uh, metals, this CLI will tell metals that uh, this project uses OSLib and we should be able to use OSLib. Let me try import OS that class. Yeah. So these are classes from OSLib. So OSLib is available right now in metals. So what I'm going to do here is writing this small application listing files so using the main start main method and if uh, if there are no arguments I'm going let's use uh, these no arguments let's list files in the current library which is this in I else 
let's make the arguments, let's convert the arguments to OSA path this way. And now for each input path, let's just file. This. It's done this way in my slab. Let's print the name of each file. So here there are issues because path was path. Path is an object. Why? Because, because this is an array and this is a sequence. So let's convert this to a sequence. And we don't have any more errors. Let's go back to the terminal. Right, we have the same errors here. So um, we have our application. Let's try to run it. So I'm going to use the run set command. Okay, and this is a bug we see uh, from a well, from a diagnostic. Um, okay. If I try again, right. Um, and one thing we can do here is not print hidden files. So I'm going to require the name not to start with a dot. And yeah, it worked. So, um, so we have this small application here. Um, now let me quickly show you how to package it. So we have a package set command here. I'm going to write the output to an ls file. If I run this, it should launcher here, which is not, it's not exactly an assembly. It's still a jar, but um, I, I, I won't uh, I don't have time to to detail things here, but uh, it's lighter than uh, an assembly. So you can do this, and if you want an assembly, you can pass assembly. It's been, assemblies are a bit take a bit more time to be generated, but it should work. And uh, yeah, we have to file, we have an assembly which is bigger here. And the uh, last thing we can do is um, we can, if we want, uh, use Scala native to package that application. So if I pass dash just native here, and um, I'm going to add this to this file. So one caveat, one thing to forget here is uh, when you have dependencies, uh, if you use scan native or scan js, you need to add a second column here, right before the, the version. Um, so we have two times two columns here, here and here. Uh, we hopefully we should make that automatic in the future that users don't have to remember how many columns to put everywhere, but it's not yet. So we have to, to think about it. If I save this, I can Compile the project with Scala native, and then have Scala native generate a native binary for this application. It takes a bit more time because things have to go through the Scala native pipeline, but um, it doesn't take that much time. Almost done. So we have a native application here, which rates a few megabytes, 
and it's much faster to, to run compared to the JVM versions. So, um, so it is where uh, some of the core features of Scala CLI. Now, one thing uh, we may want to do with uh, this application is we could publish it to remote repositories and then run it from there. So, um, strictly speaking, this application is not a micro library, but we would, it, magic macro library this way would be exactly the same. So, um, so I'm going to publish this to a remote repository. And then I'm going to use a Corsier, this Corsier CLI to fetch this application from remote repositories and run it from there. So, um, first thing you can do here is can, before pushing it to remote repositories, we can publish it locally. So I'm going to do Scala CLI publish local. And it's complaining about two things here. So it needs an organization and it needs a version. So I'm going to do what it says and add an organization. So I'm going to use uh, the one associated to my GitHub account and a version. Let's use 010 snapshot. Now if I try to publish again, so I didn't need to specify the name, it used the directory name here. And, um, all right. So it was generating scaled jars, I think. And now we can check this directory and we have jars in it for this project. And we can run our application from it by using its Maven coordinates here. So if I do CS launch, I'm going to CS fetch to check where it comes from first. All right, so we have a jar from iv 2 local that we just published here. Now if I launch this, it's going to list files in the current directory. So that was from the local repository. Now let's try to do the same with uh, an actual remote repository. So I'm going to, rather than running publish local, I'm going to run publish. But uh, before that, um, publishing requires, to, uh, I mean, it's a complex thing and you need to, parameter to, to set many parameters for it to work. I'm going to use the publish setup command here, which is going to check if the application is correctly configure, configured for, for publishing. So, um, it's found nine options to be set and it tried to set a few with sensible default. So, so the name it has a, a default here. It has a default for the repository, even central through the, the new servers, uh, but it's missing many things here. So um, what I'm going to do here is, um, if you look between the lines here, we see suggestions to set properties in the Scala CLI configuration. So what I'm going to do here is uh, use the Scala CLI config command to configure uh, once and for all uh, parameters that are needed here. Parameters such as uh, credentials to push to Maven Central or a PGP key to sign artifacts. Um, so what I'm going to do here is um, for PGP, um, so it doesn't say it. So I'm going, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to run Scala CLI config, create PGP key to create PGP key in the global Scala CLI config file. So if I do this, okay, so it needs an email. I'm going to use my personal email. And so Scala CLI should create a 
PGP key of its own, keep it in its configuration. So one thing to note here is uh, this is all using Bonsi Castle, Castle, so the pure Java library to handle cryptography. Um, there are also ways to use GPG, the GPG command line to handle signing in Scala CLI, but it's not the most, uh, the, the one we prompted the most with. So uh, it should work, but this one, Bonsi Castle should be more reliable for, for now. So, um, this key was written in this file here. So, uh, this is why I, I'm like, I mean, I can get this, direct, this path in the directories command of scarcely Secrets are written in this directory. And let's have a look. So, there is a private key in it, but it's a throwaway key, so I don't mind. If, uh, if you see it here, so we have a key, public key, secret key, etc. So, so um, it was one thing that Scala published, Scala CLI published setup was complaining about. Another is credentials for publishing. So for that, I'm going to so it suggest setting the publish credential key. I'm going to show doing this. Uh, I don't recall which parameters it accepts. I'm passing it on this string and it says we need a host. So which is this one for some type in the user and a password. Um, so um, what I'm going to do, I mean, so these are a secret value somehow and um, Scala CLI accepts those in various formats. You can find details about it here. Um, but basically it accepts literal values using a value like this here. Um, but it's not really secure to pass uh, secrets on the command line. So it also accepts things like environment variable, uh, like this. Uh, but also, the, the, what I'm going to use here is uh, I have these secrets in files on my machine. So I'm just going to use this here. Um, that are in check. Okay. These are a secure file, either one, some type, and these are something for the password. Right. So, um, these are my actual Synthab credentials. So, uh, I shouldn't leak them, but if ever they do, I'm ready to, uh, I'm ready to, to reset them. So they shouldn't leak for more than, uh, more than a few seconds. Um, right. So we have this. Now let's go back to publish setup. We need a URL, a developer, so let's configure developer. So I'm going to do, I have to set publish username here. I need to set URL. Sorry. And an email, I'm going to leave empty. Alright, let's go back to publish setup. So we need a URL and for the project and some version control details. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to push that project to a GitHub repository and Scala will be able to infer all those details from the GitHub repository. So I'm going to init this. I'm not going to create a git ignore file yet because it's going to be created later, so let me add the sources. Let's connect them. And let's add a remote repo. So I'm going to create it from this name.
now we have a remote repo, so let's push things to it. And run publish setup again. And we are all set. So um, what happened here is so publish setup wrote two files. It wrote a git ignore for us. So let's add it to git. And it wrote a publish dash conf file here. Where uh, it wrote a few using directives, uh, which are useful for publishing. So let's add this file too. Okay, um, I'm going to commit them and let's try to publish the project from this machine. So it's going to try to publish this. So it's still a snapshot, a snapshot so it should land on uh, some types of snapshots. Okay, so this is a SCADA cloning. And it pushed files from the local machine to some type snapshots we found here. So this is the current date here. So that was for snapshots. And now, um, one thing, one uh, thing not to forget is we specified the first version here. So if we want uh, to have a bit versions to be confused from uh, git tags, say, we have to remove it. So I'm going to run again, publish setup. Right. And it should have added yes, some version related keys. If I do this, I have a new key here telling it to compute versions using git tags. So I'm going to add this. Commit it. And try to, uh, I'm going to cut tag 0 from 0 say. We are on tag and let's try to publish again. And it should, this time it's going to try to, not to push, not to some type snapshots, but to um, an intermediate repository that would make ultimately these artifacts land on Maven Central. More things to do here for it. But ultimately, it should work. So we only have five minutes left, I think. Um, so um, while this runs, I'm going to try to set to set up publishing from the CI. So I'm going to open terminal here. Uh, so to publish from the CI, I'm going to run publish setup dash dash CI to ensure everything is set up correctly for uh, publishing. So here it complains that it doesn't have a GitHub token. So I need to set one in the config using this key here. So I'm going to do this, like this. It's a secret tool, so I need to specify it this way. Should be this. Again. So it sets for secrets on the GitHub repository, so let's check them. They should be here. Secrets. They're here. And um, now it also wrote a few files, so it wrote a workflow for us, and it updated the publish conf here. So let's check it, it added a few keys under publish.ci. Let's add this. Let's add the workflow it wrote. And I'm just going to edit slightly edit the workflow as we don't have tests. I'm only going to compile things here rather than test them. Oops. 
let's copy this and push it and hopefully it should um, it should publish so uh, it should be a snapshot from uh, the CI yeah. so I didn't push the tag so it's going to publish 010 snapshot I think push the tag anyway So publishing snapshots should be fast enough. So yeah, while this was running, the publish publishing a non-snapshot from the local machine finished running. So and it worked. So um, we can check results from the public repository here. So this one should be here. This is our file. And a few guess maybe in half an hour, we should be able to find them on Maven Central and this address. Now let's go back to this one. Compile things, then it needs to publish them. And um, we only have a few minutes, a few more minutes. And so publishing will start, publishing a snapshot will start here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a tag from GitHub to release the next uh, version. So let's say 011. Let's finish it. So snapshot should be published or write is published from the CI and then a new job a new job will start to publish the, the 011 version or from the CI. Well so I'm not sure it's gonna end before uh, 45 yet yeah, already 45. Um, so I don't know if I have a few more minutes or if I should stop here. Let's keep going. I didn't stop publishing. Okay, it starts now. <clears throat> and just like locally, this is going to push things to. Uh, this is going to publish things to Maven Central using the Sonata API. So hopefully, just like locally, uh, things should go from open to closed to released uh, on, on the Snow type servers here. Luckily, we have this. And the same thing is happening uh, on the CI here. But I'm not sure we'll have time to wait for this to finish. Um, still running. Okay, so this time I got an error. Why? So that's the demo effect. Uh, should be the same key as locally, except we don't know this time. Okay, I don't know. Um, it worked when I put that. Um, um,
right, we have, we have time to jump into the Q&A here. We've got a question for you, Alex. First, thank you for your talk so much. And uh, let's jump into our question here. Huh. All right, if my Scala CLI app has multiple Scala files that require the same libraries, is it possible to share the using directives among them? Uh, yeah, the, the using directives are uh, project-wide, so you can put them in any file and they are going to apply to the, the whole Scala CLI project. The whole project. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Excellent. Well, that's all the questions we have, Alex. Thank you so much again for being here at ScalaCon, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Firing retro rock. Roger, Matt. Ready to eject.